Welcome back to What Are T Nibs with General Disturbance. This is a T-30, it's a tier 9 American turreted tank destroyer. It's located on the north spawn of Malinovka and it's under the command of Rinza. Now, originally this was a tier 10 heavy tank, but Wargaming demoted it, turned it into a tank destroyer and now people play it at tier 9. If he's got the top gun, he's got a 155mm gun. He has. It's capable of doing 750 output, penetrating 276 with standard rounds, and with the APCR that goes up to 320, and he's loaded one straight away. Now, the T-30 is one of a series of tanks that the Americans made, heavy tanks, to deal with the threat of the IS-3. Oh, now that one was wasn't fully lined up. He should have put a little bit of lead on the target before he fired. 17.33 second reload is quite long. Now the um, the other tanks in the series that they built at the same time were the T-29, which is of course the Tier 7 American Heavy, and then the T-32, and then the T-34, and of course this little monster, the T-30. I say monster actually, it's a rather lovely tank actually, rather lovely tank destroyer. It's that big 155mm gun really. It's a bit of a monster. Yes, <laughs> I said monster again. Yeah, it's it's a great little tank. It's not a bad skin this for the uh, T-30. You can see all the bits and bobs in the cage hanging off the back of the turret. Okay, Barask bites the dust, just like that. Now the reload is a bit of a pain, 17.33 seconds. You can reduce that if you use premium consumables, but if you do then you're going to have to get rid of either your repair kit, your first aid, or your fire extinguisher. I know a lot of people would get rid of the fire extinguisher and then train their crew in firefighting to ensure that, yeah, they can survive and take a hit without burning to death. But uh, this little thing, it, I mean, it's so capable. With a good rammer, good crew, and, uh, well, with premium consumables, you can do a lot of damage to the enemy, especially that 750 Alpha. STA-1 is going to get a bit of a wake-up call any second. And we've got an IS-32 accompanying us up to the top, so he's capable of doing a lot of damage as well. 780 from his two guns. The T-10 bounced his round off the front of our vehicle, and in return he received a hit from us for 627. And now he's going to use the wreck of the Barask as extra armour. There's no RT in this game, so he can do this and get away with it. If there was no R if there was RT, he wouldn't be able to. Takes out the Tiger 2 with one shot, 536. I would never recommend pushing a wreck if there's RT in the game. It just gives away your position. Even if you're unspotted, the wreck will be spotted. And you'll see the wreck moving. All you have to do is aim behind it. So you can't do it. Oh, big hit. Yes, the A1, 671. Bounces the round that came back, bounces another one, bounces a third. The armor's pretty tough on this thing. Even though they're hitting him, they're not getting through. And that is Tiger T10. Takes another hit for 665. He's now one shot. If he stays where he is, he is going to be dead. And I'm sure he is going to stay where he is. Because he doesn't know where to go. And he's out the game. Okay, so now we're pushing the wreck on. He's treating that little Barask as his own personal toy to be played with. Much like a cat plays with a, a mouse. <laughs> but <laughs> look at this. Type 4. Goes for the weak spots. Waiting for the reload. Yep, easily. And a high roll, 784. Oh, he's just not going to respect any of these enemy, enemy tanks at all. He's just going to carve them to pieces. 
going for another shot. Bouncing around from the Type 4 Heavy. Oh! He finally blocked the shot at the other end. Oh, that's awkward. But he's just going to wait here a moment till he reloads and then he'll have another go. See if he can get it this time. Ah, oh, the wreck of the Brask is getting in the way there, but... Well, is he going to go for the turret? Yep, got him. So, three kills now. And I don't think that Super Pershing is going to stand up. And he's decided to leave the brass here because he wants to move fast. And the best way to do that now is to... Oh, stop to take a shot on the Super Pershing. Claim another kill. Easy. High caliber potential. He's done enough to get 20% of the hit points in total. He just needs to keep his damage rate up so that somebody else doesn't get it ahead of him. 4,537 hit points showing so far. But you never know, one of these other guys, something like the IS-32, might have managed to do more. We'll have to see. I doubt it, but... Okay, Rinzer, what's next? Still some enemies to go, four of them in total. There's a Progetto 46 out there. Oh, there's the enemy T-30. Oh, he's got to have him. And he does. 770 hit points. Didn't get the kill, but he got a hit. And there's the Fosh. Now, he doesn't want to expose himself to the Fosh, so he's using the bush mechanic. Wait for it, wait for it. He's tr even trying to get the weak spot. The aiming device. Don't need to, really. That's enough. 383 off the Fosh. I think it's almost certain that he's going to get the high caliber. Moving on. Oh, and the last enemy's been killed. Wow, look at them. They all tried to kill him. They all failed. And Rinza wins the day. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. Ace tanker for Rinza in the T30. He managed to get a shell proof for blocking more damage to the hit points to his own vehicle. A duelist for taking down two tanks who damaged him. A fighter badge for getting at least four kills. He ended up with five, one third of the enemy team and just one tank short of a top gun. And a fire for effect for doing more damage to the hit points to his own vehicle. And he did get the high caliber. Yes, he earned enough to get it and keep it. It's his. And uh, let's have a look at the rest of the team score and see how it compares. 5,690 hit points of damage. The IS-32 was the second highest damage with 3,305, but he just couldn't keep up with Rinza's fire rate. And yes, he was reaping more damage than the IS-32. When it came to kills, it was Rinza again with five kills, two kills. The IS-32, the Panhard a, um, Link 6x6, the Tiger 2, and the Scorpion. And one member of the enemy team managed to get more than one kill, and that was uh, only the Progetto 46. And when it came to base XP, of course he's at the top. He's got the top in all three columns. 1,295 base for Rinsa, 1,057 went to the IS-32, and 980 went to the Link 6x6. He fired 13 rounds, got 11 direct hits, 10 penetrations, damage of... 5,690 hit points, of which 1,679 was at more than 300 meters. He received eight hits from the enemy, but only one of them actually penetrated. You saw in the picture, it was the one that went through the top of the, the turret. It carved a hole right through the, the top and actually took out his vision device in the process. He actually received seven non-penetrations. All of those shots either hit the gun mantlets or around the turret area. So they just didn't go for the weak spots and that's why he managed to survive. 2,340 hit points of damage blocked by armor. He didn't qualify for a, high, uh, for a steel wall simply because he just didn't get enough hits on his own tank. He only received eight. He needed 11 to get the steel wall. But I'm pretty sure he would have qualified for it if he'd actually received more damage. Two enemy vehicles were spotted, eight enemy vehicles were damaged and five were killed and 689 hit points of damage assistance. He earned 49,428 credits from that game and after repair and ammunition respawn, remember he did fire a fair amount of premium ammo, he actually came away with 5,485 credits profit. He received 1,295 XP times two for the first victory 
and took away 3,886 experience points altogether. Just goes to show the T-30 can actually be played almost like a heavy tank rather than a tank destroyer. It's a in-your-face tank. It's not a case of hanging back at the back because you're fragile because you've got weak armor. Mind you, it did help that he actually carried that Baraska around because the weak spot on this tank really is the hull. So by carrying that Baraska around, he actually increased the armor on his hull and still was able to shoot over the top of the hull. And if the enemy was going to reply, they were going to hit the heavy armor on the turret, which actually blocked most of the shots. So good thinking by Rizna, but as I said, don't try that tactic of pushing a wreck before you if there's RT in the game because the RT will constantly see the dead wreck but they won't necessarily see you but if they see a wreck moving they'll fire behind it and they will hit you. So if you push a wreck it basically gives away your position even if you're not spotted. So there you go. Good game by Rizna. If you enjoyed it please give this video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Let other people know. Leave a comment down below the video. And thanks for watching.